Hello and welcome to the 14th Hammer tutorial in the version 2 series. This tutorial will apply to all Source Engine games, but I will be using Counter-Strike Global Offensive to complete this tutorial. Today we will be adding NVQ maps to our level to generate static reflections, as well as adding the reflective property to custom materials in our game. To start off, let's just start by placing the NVQ map entity. What this entity will functionally do is take static images of our level to be loaded later when the player needs them to be reflected in the world. These are cheaper than real-time reflections, but again, they're also not as good because they are static. Very simple to place. Start by pressing Shift-E to select the Entity tool, and place a new entity in your level. The texture that we're going to be manipulating today to have reflectiveness is this tile texture that I've generated. With our entity, we're going to change it to NV Cube Map, and once we create that, we'll get this small little chrome ball with NV Cube Map underneath it. There is one easy way that I have found to place cube maps in your level, and that is to simply place them on the ground and then raise them up. They need to be raised up because a cube map, once again, statically generates the images, and they get statically generated at the height of the entity. A player's view is 64 units from the ground. So these cube maps need to be generated 64 units from the ground to look properly. If they're generated 8 units off the ground, then the reflections will be 8 units off the ground, and they'll be really close to the floor, and they won't look quite right. After you have your entity created, press Control x to cut the entity and put it on your clipboard. Now we just need to place the entity in our level. So using the 3D view, we're just going to fly over to this room here, and each room typically needs one cube map. Areas of high contrast will need cube maps as well. Like, for instance, this one of inside to outside. This is a large area of contrast. And the cube maps need to be pretty good here, because if you're inside and your reflections are from outside, that's not going to look right. Again, starting just from this room, press Control v to paste the entity on the floor, and then using your top view, position it approximately in the center of the room. Once it's in the center of the room, you should be good, just leave it there. Paste another entity, I'm going to put one in this closet here, approximately once again in the center. And we're just going to put one pretty much in the center of every room. So another one here. This hallway is a bit darker since there's no light, so I'm going to put one approximately in the center there. I'm going to put one in this dark room over here. Uh, one in this room here, right in the center. And a another one outside. Now this outside area here is a little tricky. I'm actually going to place about six cube maps here. That might be a little overkill. You'll learn cube maps better as you make le more levels. So I'm going to paste one right here at the bottom of the set of stairs. I'm going to place one over in the corner here, or on the side. I'm going to place one on the player spawn directly under the peninsula because this is a very high area of contrast since there's something going to be directly above us and I'll place one on the center of this hole here. Now this tree gives us an interesting predicament because normally we'd put a cube map right there in the center but then the reflections are going to be generated inside the cube and they won't look quite, quite right. So I'm actually going to place two, one on each side. I'm going to paste one there, kind of center it, I'm going to paste another one over here, kind of center it. Now once they're all placed, we just need to raise them up 64 units. The easiest way to do this, I've discovered, is fly next to one of your cube maps and create a brush next to it that is 64 units high. So now the entities need to be level with this brush to be able to generate the correct reflections. To do this, we're going to click Map and then Entity Report, and we'll see all the entities in our level. We're going to select all of the NV cube maps. To do this, find them, hold shift, click the bottom one. Select all of them at the same time. Then use the arrow keys to nudge the entities upward until they're equal with this brush. If arrow keys don't nudge for you, go to Tools, Options, 2D Views, and then select Arrow Keys Nudge Selected Object Slash Vertex. It's a very good option to have set. Now our cube maps are actually good to go, but we don't have any reflective materials in our level. So we're going to apply that to this material here. Press Shift A to open the face edit sheet, and then click Browse. Once you have the texture selected, since it's a custom texture, we're able to use the Explore to Source and Open Source objects. Since this one here is a stock texture, if we click Explore to Source, it actually just takes us to our My Documents folder, because it's actually packed in a VPK. So it can't be opened using that source object. 
So if we click this one and click open source, it'll pop open the VMT for us in our text editor. If we click explore to source, it will open up the folder path to it. Now with the VMT open, we need to add one line to be able to get reflections on this. So drop down once, open a quote, do dollar sign, envy map, tab over once, and put envy cube map. This will tell the game that we want to use reflections on this material. We have to add this line to the material before we compile the level. If you add reflectiveness to material and you've already compiled the map, you'll need to recompile it so the game knows to put reflections on it. Once it's been added, we can easily manipulate the reflections in game pretty much in real time. So once that's been saved, I'm just going to click uh, run map. You'll notice when I went back and hammer, it applied the reflection to the material and we can see kind of a crane here. This is using the skybox from Vertigo. So if you see a texture in Hammer have this reflectiveness to it, that means it's going to have cube map reflections in game. Press F9 and compile the level. Once we're in game and we're ready to rock and roll, we'll see that we don't have any reflections on this texture even though we've told it specifically to have reflections. I'm going to show you guys a way to verify your cube maps. We're going to do this with the op weapon because the scope actually has a reflective backing on it that uses the cube maps. So we're going to open up our console, type give weapon underscore op, and that will give us the op. We'll see here that we have just a little speck of light on our scope, but not the area around us. This is because the cube maps aren't built yet. We have to build our cube maps before they'll show up. To do this, we open our console and type build cube maps, and then press enter. What that just did was fly through the game and put its position at every cube map and take the static reflections. Now those static reflections are packed into our level and they can be recalled at any time when we need them. But oddly enough, we still don't have any cube maps in our level. We need to make the game reload all the materials basically to get this to work. If you're in another game that doesn't have the op, I apologize. I'm unsure of how you're going to verify that this actually works. You'll just have to follow the tutorial and it'll work in the end. But to verify, you'll either need another entity or weapon that has reflections on it, or you can use the Impulse 81 cube map weapon, but that does seem to be broken in some games. I'll include a link to an article in the description below so you guys can check that out on your own. So there's one console command that we're going to use a lot. It is mat reload all materials. I'm going to put quotes around that and bind it to a key. So bind space I space mat reload all materials is now bound to a key. And when I press that, the game will lag for a second. That means that it's working. Now you'll notice that the materials didn't reload per se and there's no reflections. To get this to work, alt tab out of the game or minimize it and then bring it back up. The game will lag for a second and boom, we have our reflections. If that doesn't work, you can just restart the game and it'll work all the same. When I position myself right here where this cube map entity is, the tree reflection is actually spot on because that's where the reflections are taken from. If I walk up here, you see now we're using that one right underneath the peninsula. And the cube maps are actually pretty good about being on ground. I pull out my op and we see that we are at an outside area. I go inside, you notice that the cube maps didn't actually switch. But the ground in here is using this direct cube map right there because it's using just the closest material. If these were one brush, they'd be using the same cube map. So splitting brushes here can be useful. There's another option on your cube maps in addition to cube map size, which should be left as default, called brush faces. This will make a brush face forced to use this NV cube map. It's typically not used that much, but again, I will include an article in the description below so you guys can read up on it more. I've used it maybe once or twice. Just walk around, you see our everything's a little overly shiny, you may be noticing. Um, there are some things that we're going to do the, to the texture to make this work how we want it to. So I'm going to stick outside. We're going to bring open our text document here with our custom texture. If you'd like to use a stock texture and add reflectivity to it, Use GCFscape, extract the VMT from the VPK file, rename it something custom, and put it into your game directory. We rename it so that way when you pack the level, it will know that you're using a custom texture. The first thing we're going to change is the intensity of the reflections. So we're going to drop down to a new line and do NV map 
tint tab over do an open and a close bracket as well as quotations the quotations are actually required here Inside these brackets, we're going to use RGB. So these RGB values can be 0 through 1. Decimals are accepted. And these are red, green, blue, the amount of reflectivity on the material. So if I were to set these to 0, 0, or 1, 0, 0, that means that only red is going to be shown on this reflection. I'm going to save that and then press I. It's going to reload. And we just see that everything got tinted red. That's because the reflections are only being red now. But we can use this for something else. Instead of setting it to 111, if I set it to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0.2, now the texture is only going to be 20% reflective. If I reload the materials, I'll take a screenshot, and we'll set this back to full. We can see here that the reflections are very different amounts, and this is great for if you want to get more control out of your reflections. So. I'm actually going to leave that at full for the rest of this tutorial. And we're also going to use another command called nvmapContrast. We do dollar sign nvmapContrast, tab over, and do a quote. This is a 0 through 1 value, and this is the amount of contrast that is in our reflections. So if I set it to 1, reload, we see that there's a lot more contrast now. The darker just got darker, and the lights just got lighter. So again, I will take a screenshot, and we can see here that there is a massive difference in how these reflections look with the contrast command. Now the other command that we're going to use is saturation. So NV map saturation, tab over, new quote. This is again 0 through 1, and it is the amount of saturation or color that's in our texture. So I'm going to reload all materials. We see that it's black and white now. Take a screenshot, and I'll set that to 1. You can definitely see mainly over in the left side of the screenshot where the orange wall is, where it was black and white in the one screenshot and orange in the other. Totally makes a great difference, and this can be used as a great effect in your level. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with V2 tutorials. I hope you learned a lot about reflections and cube maps in your level. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and happy mapping!